Hey everybody, this is Tokyo Ish Tatiana and Red Foster with Killer, Killer Lashes. Lashes, a true crime podcast. If you're in the mood for real life crime stories, then tune in to Killer Lashes every week on all streaming platforms and at Age of Radio. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me as always is... Sesame Spirit and Carla. That's a good name. Thank you. Just wanted to let you know that, uh, baby, if you've ever wondered, wondered whatever became of me, I'm living on the air on All Too Real 2. All Too Real 2, WKRP. Wait, that's not how it goes. I'm sorry. Wait. <laughs> I'm quoting the song. It's... It's, I'm living on the air in Cincinnati, Cincinnati, WKRP. Oh, okay. Got kind of tired of packing and unpacking. <laughs> I, I used to sing the song all the time. I used to watch the reruns of WKRP in Cincinnati to go to sleep to as a little child. Nice. On uh, Nick at Night or something. Yes. So today, folks, tis the season to be merry, but I'm going to stay Mike. And, um... <laughs> I don't change my name like Sesame does. No. And, no. and uh, we are going to start out with our slot of Christmas-themed episodes. This is what I'm going to call a frosty favorite, because we usually have frosty failures, and this one isn't bad. So um, it's a uh, episode of the television series WKRP in Cincinnati, which, and if you are not aware of, was an American sitcom that uh, ran from uh, 1978 until 1982 on CBS. Never had great ratings but it had good reviews it was a really good uh good uh television series i kind of feel like it was like a precursor in certain ways to uh news radio which also didn't have good ratings it was a good series that was a precursor to a lot of shows that came after that i think <laughs> so yeah yeah most famous episode is one we're not covering today but we might cover it in the future is their their thanksgiving episode from season one today we are covering yeah, and the basic the basic premise of the show by the way too i should probably get that out of the way it's about a it, it's it's about a uh, radio station in the fictional radio station in Cincinnati called WKRP, hence the name WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> that was a very clever name for it. Anyways, it's about a group of uh, people running a radio station, basically running this rock radio station. The format changed. They brought in a new uh, new uh, station manager played by Gary Sandy named Andy Travis in the first like season or something. And then, you know, basically you've got, you've got a group of, you know, crazy people. You got... Howard Hessman is Dr. Johnny Fever, who's like a drugged out rock and roll DJ. You got Gordon Jump as uh, Arthur Carlson, who is the station manager slash owner. His mom really owns the station. Um, <laughs> got Lonnie Anderson as Jennifer Marlowe, who is the uh, secretary at the place, receptionist, whatever you want to call it. Um, you got Tim Reed, the fabulous Tim Reed, as Venus Flytrap, who's another one of the DJs there the resident African-American character. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and they, 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 they really play up the fact that he's an African-American on the show. Yeah. That's yeah. They, they always do. Um, Jan Smithers is Bailey quarters, who is uh, another, it's like a person that works in the news department at the sh station, along with Rich Sanders as Les Nessman, who is like an uptight kind of uh, news guy. And then you've got, uh, Frank Bonner as Herb Tarlick, who is their, uh, the salesman for the station. He like sells advertising and he's kind of a sleazeball. So yeah, that's your main cast of the show. Um, the show did come back later on in 1991 to 93 in syndication as the new WKRP in Cincinnati with some some of the people returning we may cover some of those episodes in the future because i think that'd be interesting to cover some people came back a lot of the people didn't but you did have a few of the original cast members and it was still about the station so yeah um the episode that we are covering is called jennifer's home for christmas it aired as the 11th episode of the second season on december 17th of 1979 directed by rob daniel and written by Hugh Wilson, Dan Gunselman, and Steve Marshall. Okay, so initial thoughts here of this episode. It's pretty funny. Yeah. I liked it. That's all I got. 
<laughs> <laughs> Me too. I liked it. I mean, it, funny, it, I liked it, you know? very of yeah. it of its time, but it was actually kind of ahead of its time in certain ways. I think too. So yeah, the humor of it, it was kind of you know slightly progressive humor in a lot of ways too. So which is good. Anyways, what happens in this episode here, Sesame? Jennifer wants to have a Christmas party at the office, and everyone else is just looking for a way to get home. They don't. They're not really looking forward to Christmas. It's kind of like an obligation for them. You know, various people are going to different parts of the country. You know, one guy's going to. Chicago. Chicago. Another guy's going to Dayton for some reason. He thinks he needs to fly to Dayton. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Not sure why, and he planned his trip in advance from July so that he could buy to Dayton from Cincinnati. I don't know, whatever. I don't even. I don't. Do I don't even know if he can do that. That's what I was. Yeah, wondering. I'm not even sure that's if that's even a thing you could do. But uh, it, it, it's like that, a it's like a 53 minute drive. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so a plane ride would be like 15 minutes. Yeah, you spend more going to the airport. I know. Getting ready to fly than just driving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the whole the whole place and um i'm sure there was buses back then that would go from dayton to cincinnati as yeah well. you would think but Grey- uh, greyhound or something you know hell no you would think mm-hmm. but who knows this guy was very thorough and yeah jennifer's the only one that's really looking forward to christmas you know who's in the spirit and so you know she was hoping that you know they would have like a, a long christmas party but everybody was just trying to force a christmas party to end you know really fast like trying to get people to eat all the cookies real fast and oh she she got everyone gifts and there was they were supposed to have a policy where there were going to be no gifts so then everyone felt obligated to go pick up a random gift for people so they were just like buying stupid shit that nobody really wants you know it reminds like me it reminds me the other day at my work um i work at a place where i clean offices and and had our at our meeting at um the my manager said said so so uh last year we did uh secret santa does anybody want to do secret santa this year nobody raised their hand wow i was like what the heck i wasn't going to be the first person to raise my hand if i wanted to but i was just like no <laughs> Nobody raised nobody raised their hand. I'm like, uh, it could be cool, it could be not cool. My main thing with it is is I I just started working there not too long ago. I kinda know people, but I don't know what to get people and you know, so it was somewhere I'd been working for years, you know, maybe I would do it, but it's like how yeah. do you you know, if you don't really know the people. I don't know, I'm kinda of torn on that too, because you know, I think it's unfortunate, you know, like you know, like I don't know, it seems like people wanna do that stuff less and less and only only like wanna know the people they already know kind of thing like they yeah. really want to branch out at all it seems like people are becoming more tribalistic like that you know like well it's like i I, 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 I like the people i work with and i i mean at our at our we have a meeting every night a safety meeting where we talk about i i just think it's a kind of pointless meeting honestly but we have it every night and um i uh i always try to make things funny like answering funny answers to questions and stuff like yeah. that to make people laugh because sometimes it's just dull i mean it, it but my manager's pretty lively she she gets it you know gets people interested but it's like you know yeah. like the like like the other day she uh i know this is kind of a tangent but the other day she said something like uh you know so are there any uh questions or concerns about that and i said i don't have any concerns about that but i do have a lot of concerns about life <laughs> and everybody just looked at me weird but i'm wow. like okay whatever <laughs> she laughed at it <laughs> <laughs> wow but yeah, that's just my sense of humor. But yeah, you know, it, it does seem like it. I think a lot of it has to do with money, though, too. People just don't want yeah. don't want to spend extra money on people when they've got to buy for all their kids and family and stuff, you know. So, yeah. But but anyway, well, yeah, so, so, so yeah, it yeah, makes sense. But yeah, I mean, but this is kind of like an early version of that where people are just like wanting to leave. And I guess but in a certain way, though, they're kind of wanting to get home to their families and stuff. So it kind of makes sense. Yeah. But yeah. So what else happens here? So one dude gave the um, I don't know if he's like the manager of the place or whatever. Uh, think of worms. Oh, that that was a uh, herb who uh, is the uh, he gave the manager. Um, he, he gave uh, Miss, Mr. Carlson, who Gordon Jump plays. And herb, herb is like also known as like a cheapskate. And the reason I think he, he said something about giving the worms because they were they were basically, I think, a gift from an advertiser. Oh, wow. So like the, like one of their main advertisers is like people that sell worms probably for fishing and stuff. So wow, because <laughs> he gave somebody else like thumbtacks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like thanks for the thumbtacks. The guy's like totally <laughs> oblivious. Yeah, and he's like, oh yeah, you're welcome. You're my best friend or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
And yeah, you know, they're just trying to get out of it. And Jennifer gets offended because everyone wants to leave. And so um, they get the idea that maybe she was going to be alone for Christmas. And that's why, you know, she wanted everyone to stay alone at party. So then Venus ends up calling up um, Johnny. Yeah, calling up Johnny and telling, telling him what's up or whatever. So then everybody shows up to her house and just brings a Christmas tree, basically. Yeah. And so she's got like it's some for some reason she kept getting television sets. I don't know who was giving their TV sets. She's she's known to be like because she's so pretty. She dates a lot of guys. Oh, okay. And I think they're what they were getting at with the joke of that is is that like you know these guys are just lavishing her with presents. So okay. So they just keep yeah, doing it. Wondering. Like there's this delivery guy who keeps delivering shit. So yeah, yeah, because she's like got like a smaller TV and she's like, oh, I guess I'll have to put that one in the bathroom or something. Yeah. <laughs> I just got all these TVs and then like yeah, all the people from work show up and they bring, you know, Christmas trees and they're like they're teasing the one guy because he didn't bring the Christmas tree. And you're like, Oh well you have you have to bring a tree in order to stay and stuff like that. Yeah. He's like, Okay, well I guess I'll go out and get a tree then <laughs> They're like, okay, hold on, maybe, maybe we'll make an exception of one time, you know, type of thing. Yeah, and that, and that, 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 and, and that was Herb, who like, he's kind of the sleazy guy, and um, yeah, on, on the show he always has a thing for Jennifer, and uh, okay. but he's married, so oh wow, it's kind of of that time too, where it's just like, yeah. oh, it's, a, it's okay to be a sleaze if you're married, I guess, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, 1970s, you know. I can't remember if him and Jennifer ended up ever having a thing or if it was just, you know, a one-sided type thing, so, yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, and then uh, what else happens? Um, well, I, I, someone, I, this, Admiral? A, a, a guy, um, a, a random, first off, a random guy comes, and I don't know if he's the Admiral or what, but he all he does is speak in French. Yeah. And uh, he's, uh, I'm assuming, like, one of her boyfriends or something, and uh, George Gaines plays that character. His name's Henri. He, uh, he He's uh, George Gaines, you would know from the Police Academy movies and from Punky Brewster, among other things. So, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah he played George Wat- Watermelon on uh, Punky Brewster, and he was the Commandant, Commandant Lassard on uh, in uh, Police Academy movies. So, yeah, oh. yeah, which is interesting. But he was also, I was reading on the trivia, married to the woman who played... Played, I believe, uh, Mrs. Carlson, um, Mr. Carlson's mom. So in real life, so okay. from the yeah, so yeah. Anyways, yeah, but yeah, he he comes in and he's speaking all French to her, and she's just like looking at him and everything like that. And then you know he leaves, and they're like, you know, do you uh, didn't know you speak French? And she's like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so just... you know, she has to listen to this guy go on for like two straight minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. I wonder what he was saying because it would be interesting to have it translated. Yeah, I think I recognize one of the words, but I don't. I don't remember what, yeah. what it was. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't know if he, uh, he's the admiral or somebody else is, but she ends up. She she's going to. She's she's being flown to Bethlehem for Christmas, and she's taken to by some some guy named the admiral yeah. or something, and his person who has a private uh, jet. Yeah, apparently, by all the way from Cincinnati to Bethlehem, um, at a private jet. Yeah, which that how long would that take? That's like a twenty hour flight, probably or something. I mean, I don't know. Uh, wonder, but you yeah. gotta look it up. I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> you gotta look it up. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I, I'll talk while you're looking. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'll keep our guests entertained. Um, interestingly enough, um, uh, you know, there there are no Christmas celebrations in Bethlehem right now. Um, for reasons I don't want to get into. But, um, you know, so good that she got to go to Bethlehem in 1979, though. So with the Admiral, whoever this Admiral is. Yeah, it it, it it takes one day and 11 hours with connecting flights, I guess, to get there. Okay, so. Like, like the, the, the shortest one I can see right now is like a 23-hour flight. 23 hours oh. and 51 minutes. So, so you're looking, that that's just off the, like, the top four flights that they have listed yeah. here. I'm not going to look anymore. Yeah, but yeah, that's. <laughs> but man, can you just imagine though, like you know, how insane travel has gotten, where you could literally go to Bethlehem or Cincinnati, Ohio, in a day? Like, like you know what I mean? Yeah, like, <clears throat> that would take like you know months in the past. Um, the the thing I'm trying to figure out is like, are they actually letting people fly into there right now with what's going on in that region? Oh, I don't know. I'm just saying that because uh, because they, they've got flights listed. It's like a. It's oh, like I... it's weird. It's like it's like a um. Seven... No. Like a one thousand one hundred and seventy dollars to fly there. I guess. I mean, yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Um, but she got to go in 1979. That's nice. You know, the you yeah. know the mm-hmm. Palestinian Christians can't celebrate Christmas this year though. But you know, yeah. 
you know, anyway, uh, um, you know, <laughs> not gonna, sorry, not gonna get into that. No, <laughs> nope. Not allowed to, say. Um, yes. So anyway, she's also taking some uh, kids from an orphanage there to Bethlehem to celebrate Christmas, too. That's so. right, yeah. yeah. Which is weird, again. Why would you do a, a day travel to celebrate Christmas? I don't know, it just seems like it's a lot of traveling for kids. And, yeah, I know. Gonna, gonna get ornery and fidgety. And, 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 and I mean, I know, I know it's a good intention, but my thing is, it's like, is that really what kids in an orphanage want to do, is, is fly all the way to Israel for a... <laughs> Yeah, to go to the Bethlehem. I, mean, I guess they're, they're super religious. I guess. Yeah. Like, but... Most most kids just like Christmas because of like, Santa Claus and the presents and stuff. You know, and you know Jesus is like you know fun little afterthought. You know, know. you could take him to the well, Cincinnati. No. You, you could take take him on a shopping spree to like a mall in Cincinnati or something. You know, yeah, I mean, it's just... they're they're happy. You take them to church. You know, Christmas Eve. You're like, oh, okay, it's fun. You know, whatever. You know, in one hour. I mean, you, you, know, you could take them to Beth- Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and they'd probably be just as happy well that would yeah yeah <laughs> uh, although according to our last um last year when we reviewed um saving christmas or kirk cameron yeah saving Chris, apparently every little thing about christmas has a hidden connection to ancient christianity even going to the candy canes and and uh-huh. stuff like oh so that way you know you're justified in celebrating christmas because you know apparently you know you wouldn't be allowed to unless every little thing about our christmas can be somehow linked to original Christianity going down to Santa Claus being St. Nicholas who committed a hate crime against one of his religious opponents and that was celebrated in the movie as, as a good thing. Yeah. yeah be, be, sure, be sure to listen to that episode yeah. if you yeah. haven't yet. And, uh, uh, you, you, you'll get more detail. It's interesting. you get more details on them. And, uh, I don't recommend online. watching the movie though. <laughs> well, yeah. Although maybe because the movie's really bad so you, mm-hmm. might, you might, might be more entertaining to listen to us talk about it. I mean, there, there are Wow. There are some of the best dance sequences since uh, Saturday Night Fever that I've ever seen. Oh, in, you know, there with all <laughs> doubt. I mean, I mean, come on. It, uh, but uh, you know, step um, step up has nothing on these dance. No, <laughs> no, it wasn't. It's it's it pale, compares. but uh, yeah. just as pale as as the most of the cast of that movie was. And um, except for your token black guy. But yeah, well, of course. Yeah. Actually, no, they had two. They had two. Oh, did they? Oh, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They they had they had two this time so yeah you know, they, they they met their quota doubled it and um they had more than this episode of WKRP <laughs> well true this is nineteen seventy nine and um that was the other thing too that reminded me um because like you said that they they kind of always bring it up like that he's like the one black guy there yeah. So he was um he was the last person in the office because he was he was also working late. Well, he dressed up night. as Santa too. Yeah, yeah, and he was singing "I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas," but he couldn't say the word "white." Yeah, <laughs> he couldn't force himself to say it. Yeah, so he just skips over to the next line. Um, yeah, he's kind of like a like I mean, it's kind of like a, they I don't know if they say he is or anything, but they kind of like portray him as like a Black Panther sort of guy, you know, sir. Oh, okay. yes, so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, but, uh, but, it's, it's yeah, interesting it's too. Um, I, I I recommend looking into the history of Tim Reed, the actor who played him. He's had a very illustrious illustrious career. He's you know people might know him from Sister Sister. He played the dad on there. Uh, okay, yeah, he's been in a lot of things. But he he started out as, as a as a uh, stand up comic in a in a comedy duo with a white guy. Um, I listened to there was a really good interview with him on uh, on um, Mark Maron's podcast WTF from a couple years ago that I would recommend. He, he it's he's just he just seems like a really cool down to earth guy. Um, but yeah, he was a uh, he was in a comedy duo with Tom Dreesen who is another famous stand-up comic but you know like in the history of comedy they were like the first like mixed raced comedy duo that like broke onto the stand-up comedy scene so yeah oh wow yeah it was like uh tim and tom um they wrote a book they wrote a book about it in 2008 that you can read called tim and tom an american comedy in black and white wow. it's but it's 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 really interesting about the history of them and about he's done a lot of stuff for like race relations and stuff over the years too and he's just i don't know he's he seems like a really cool guy for like a 78 year old you know dude so yeah 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 anyways that's just a little aside yeah. anything else to say about this episode oh yeah yeah because we we end up finding out oh yeah at the end of the episode um herb gets gets a kiss from uh jennifer because he oh yeah, yeah because right. he had mistletoe with him and yeah she she breaks down and gives him a kiss at the end and yeah. knowing that he's married yeah oh, okay mm-hmm. interesting all right yeah <laughs> so you know we're we're committing light adultery right before going to bethlehem to celebrate christmas that's what you do yeah um <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Well, okay. I, well, well, I mean, I mean, it, it, I mean, Mary was an adulteress, you know, because she had a kid with God, you know, and she was married to Joseph. I mean, come on. I'm joking. Yeah, but it was <laughs> I'm <man> joking. <laughs> Wasn't sex? Dad didn't have sex. Mary, I know. come on, come on, story right. You know? Well, I'm sorry. That's that's one thing that does piss me off. So yeah, I, I'm not like a super defender of like religious doctrine, but like like I don't like it when people intentionally misrepresent oh, yeah. that just actually teaches. Like I get this. I see this a lot from like yeah. No, I, I was just I was just trying to be funny. I yeah. always get <laughs> I see it's a lot from like atheist crowds where they like go like ooh. God had sex with a teenage Mary. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not what the doctrine says. No. Like, you make it sound stupid on purpose. Like <laughs> Yeah. It's it's so nitpicky. I mean, and, and the thing is, is you can take the you can take the Bible and make it say whatever you want it to say anyway. So it's like, you know, yeah. for for good or bad intentions or just, you know, authoritative intentions where you feel like you have to have control over a woman's body or uh um or or, or gay people. But yeah, <laughs> or over you know a territory of land, you know stuff yeah. like that. You know. Mm-hmm. So anyway, anyway, so yeah. <laughs> gonna get in trouble here. Sorry, <laughs> I don't care. Anyway, so... <laughs> come at me, folks. Come at me. <laughs> I'm sorry for speaking up for the rights of human beings. No, can't do it. No, mm-hmm. the fact that I think gay and trans people should have rights and women should have bodily autonomy and um the. Uh, Bad boy, bad boy. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Anyways, tis the season to be merry. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever you want to call yourself, because I'm fine with being trans or anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> so. Trans Mary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. So, yeah. So, any other thoughts here on this episode? No, it was pretty. I mean, it was pretty straightforward. There wasn't a whole lot to it, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's your it, much- it's your typical Christmas episode of a of a sitcom in the seventies, you know. So. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I I really liked it. Um, I you know I, I like the show in general. I wish it was streaming somewhere. We can't find it streaming anywhere. Yeah. Which so it sucks. We found like- this on YouTube. This episode. So, but yeah, if you do know where it's streaming anywhere, anybody, uh, let us know and. Uh, you know, send me a message at Mike at CullenPark.com and let us know where we can find it so we can watch more episodes of the show. There has been, I know, a history of um, the show not being available for streaming and DVD due to music rights issues. Because oh, when, yeah. when, when it aired, they did play a lot of uh, current, you know, rock hits and stuff in the show. So it kind of hurt things because, you know, it's a radio, st- it's a rock radio station. So you would, you know, be playing like Led Zeppelin or whatever. And then, you know, now you know 50 years later it's kind of hard to get the rights to that song or something you know so yeah see that was before they anticipated stuff like you know um, royalties based on mm. whether a song you know it's aired on tv yeah get i mean they, they, they would pay, they would pay them then like they would, it would have you know like yeah. y- y- you'd have the rights to play it like uh when it aired and i think maybe a few times in reruns but after that you kind of had to renegotiate things and yeah a lot of people don't want to do that and nobody ever anticipated dv DVDs or streaming, you know, so yeah, I mean, that's why you got issues with like Wonder Years and other TV shows as well. And yeah. you've got you've got like most of the music replaced on Dawson's Creek on DVD and a lot on streaming too. Just because... It feels like a different show listening, watching Dawson's Creek with the song that they put over the original song. Oh, you mean the the, the theme song? Yeah, it yeah, it does. Like... They they they've uh, they've now updated it on a lot of streaming platforms. Uh, Paula Cole re-recorded the song because the problem with it is is she didn't own the. It's much like uh with. Taylor Taylor Swift has issues where she doesn't own the uh, masters to the original recording. Oh, okay. So Paula Cole still owned the song. She just didn't own the recording of the song. Okay. So she re-recorded it almost exactly just so they could put it back on the Dawson's Creek things. Okay. You know, like, like, right. like, like, like 20 or 30 years after she originally recorded Well, yeah. So yeah, it's, um yeah. So, so like, I think now, like when you watch it streaming on max or wherever it's streaming you can hear the song again but it's a re-recording of it but the songs without within the episodes though like a lot of the songs because they had a lot of uh hit songs of the day on that show too have been replaced with like sound alike songs or you know or songs that are similar in style there used to be a website i i would watch the uh new versions of it and there was a website that would tell you what the original song was and what it was replaced with so yeah 
See, that kind of takes away a little bit, though, from the mm-hmm. show, though, because, you know, yeah. the song they picked, or that's what that was meant to be playing, you know? Yeah, so... well, well but, but they did do, I think, a good job on certain shows, like especially Dawson's Creek with the replacements, because um, they had the original um, music supervisor come back and pick songs that, that they felt fit very well, a lot of them from similar artists or newer artists, and they tried to keep what they could. So it, it's not as bad as some uh, shows where they just completely replace it with like generic elevator music or something you know yeah so, <laughs> these are at least pop songs that replace pop songs you know so, yeah exactly because yeah. the the song they replaced with the, the dawson's theme. creek that was pretty good too yeah it was decent that was actually the uh, european theme song for some odd reason oh. when it originally aired they didn't have the paula cole song in uh oh okay in in europe so yeah um, anyways, that's a little aside here on uh, Dawson's Creek that has nothing to do with WKRP, but <laughs> <laughs> if you want us to cover like maybe uh, an episode of Dawson's Creek in the future, I'd be more than happy because it's one of my favorite shows of all time. So, um, I haven't watched that in like, I think in three years during COVID, I was, I got, I kind of, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. too, and, uh, I would binge it every few years. I have all the deep, I have all, all the seasons on DVD. So, um, even if it's not streaming anywhere, I can always watch it. So. Yeah. Good physical media, so they can't take it from you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, folks, uh, hope you're enjoying this festive holiday season, despite you know all the shit going on in the world. But if if, if you're feeling generous this season, we do have uh, links to some uh, to some uh, charities that you can help donate to. That'll help out people that are suffering in the world at the moment and different capacities you know so we've 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 been putting up charities on there for a while and i hope people notice that that i've been doing it ever since covid so you know just different things that'll help people because we can always use help also if you want to help support us which you know is i think a lesser thing to help but you know it does help us (laughs) out to continue to still produce this show we do have a tea public where you can get some merchandise, you know, nice Christmas gifts for people, you know, even if they come late, you know, you can get some nice gifts for yourself even, you know, thinking, hey, I need a new uh, sweatshirt or t-shirt or mug or whatever, you know, <laughs> with our with our logo on it. And then everybody will ask you, what's that? And you'll be like, it's my favorite podcast <laughs> because it is, right? And um, um, be, be sure to, uh, you know, check out those. And we also have a Patreon. You can help support the show that way also you know just check us out on all the social media and everywhere you can find the show and share it with your friends give us a five-star review on on uh, apple podcast or wherever you can review the show um but besides that folks you know just remember to uh be merry and bright make sure you legally change your names to merry and bright Mm -hmm. yes and uh i'll go do that right after the show and um remember that i love you sesame loves you and until next time bye bye thanks for listening to all too real two podcast a cullen park production Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com. Oh my God. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. You have Kenny. You have Carlo, you have Bamba. There is a three-headed goat on the loose, and they are about to come to you. You got sports, you got anime, you got media, you got entertainment. The same convo, baby. Tap in. Okay, now it's time to conversate. Same convo on your airwaves. Bamba came to entertain and Kenny talking anime. Carla coming with the sports, they changing lives in major ways. You was tweaking out if TAC ain't on your playlist. If you come and listen, then you listen to the best. They not worried about the others, cause they better than the rest. Kenny okay. Carla bomb, but they put the others to the test. New episode flow, now tap in to see what is next. We go. This is the same combo. The podcast where we talk everything sports, anime, media, and entertainment. New episodes posted every Friday and Saturday on all available platforms. Make sure you tune in, subscribe, and come have a combo with us.